You should know what your objective is. If you're ill, then the objective of life should still be in front of you. What does that mean? That if you've got happiness, even from the happiness, that you have to understand that Allah's rada, I, I, I need to attain Allah's rada. If you're poor, then you have to think that I am poor and through my poverty I have to please Allah. If you're ill, then you have to say, oh illness, due to this illness I have to please Allah. So there are both sides, both sides. Either through all those things, the ease, the comfort, a person can get lost in the world and just run after the world. But from every turn of life, everything that Allah has given, Allah is giving. Rizq Allah is giving. If He's given openly or less, if He's in ill health or health, if He's given you uh, problems or difficulties, or if He's given you good health and good fortune, totally. So in every state, in every condition, whatever hal we have, changes happen, fluctuations come time to time, ups and downs, phases. In the morning is something, in the afternoon is something, in the evening something. But objective keep in front of the Allah. Whatever hal I'm in, the state I'm in, but I will do one action is just to make you pleased. In illness I won't complain to you. In ill, good health I won't forget you. If I'm wealthy, I will not forget you. If poverty comes, destitution comes, and I'm down, sad, I will not run away from you. Believing men and women, Allah says, Allah, I have promised the believers, both men and women, you haven't lied. You had an opportunity, problems were there in the world, but you did not lie. You were honest. Oh, my believers, both men and women, my beloved men and women, I gave you illness, sickness, and, and ill health. But I swear by Allah, you had sabr, you endured, you didn't complain on the illness, you were happy on Allah's rada. Oh my Mawla, you said, oh my Lord, whatever state you leave me in, I will seek you, said the believing woman, said the believing man. I gave you assets, and despite being rich, you didn't forget me in your heart. You still had that desire and yearning, Allah will please you through my wealth. I made you poor, and I gave you poverty, and you never complained due to your poverty. Always through your poverty, you sought me, you looked for me. Allah says, وَعَضَ اللَّهُ So Allah says, oh, can I forget my promise? O oh, my mu'mins, O oh, my believing men and women, I, why shouldn't I fulfill my promise to you? Come, come towards these gardens, come to these great abodes. And Allah says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Abide therein. Allah says, وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً What is the quality of these gardens? Allah says, let me introduce you. Allah is introducing us to paradise. Allah says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً Allah says, the house for you in paradise, there's no mortgage, there's no rent to pay. Allah says, and you don't have, you're not a tenant, uh, no, do you have to pay any bills, no, do you have to give any rates for the year? Allah says, what's the rate? وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً So pure a house. And if Allah says it's so pure, it's goodly, a goodly dwelling, a great dwelling. Allah says, فِيهَا وَمَا سَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً A garden of perpetual bliss in your home. And Allah says about what in His kitab, He's mentioning this, this kitab will run until the hereafter. And it's been recited by every mu'min. Allah says, وَمَا سَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً Beautiful, good dwellings, pure, clean. And the next, Allah says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Therein to abide forever. Allah says, I've entered you into this home. I've taken you to this home. Above it are the gardens below, are the rivers. And not just this, Allah Ta'ala says, rather what? Jannatin. Allah says, Jannati Adanin. Allah says, this is not a normal garden, not the normal house. These are the houses due to my pleasure. Why? Waridwanum min Allahi Akbar. Because Allah's acceptance is the greatest. Allah said, I told you in the Quran, and you read that the greatest reward that will be in the hereafter, the greatest reward that I will give to you, Allah says in the hereafter, what is that reward? What will that be? My rada, my acceptance, my pleasure. Subhanallah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Hai, hai. Can please Allah. Yes, Radai ilahi gives taqwa. Radai ilahi, pleasure of Allah, is, gives taqwa. So Allah Ta'ala says, pleasure of Allah is taqwa. So Allah says, if I've given you Ramadan to make you a mutaki and so that you can earn the pleasure of Allah, how can it be that there, there are not the ingredients in Ramadan that can make you and give you the quality of the, attaining the pleasure of Allah? So first thing that you'll see in the fast, the first thing we will see, commonly what we see is that if there's no Radha ilahi, then there's no fast. 
If there is no acceptance of Allah, there is no happiness of Allah, then there is no fast. Remember, the fast, we put the objective in front of us that we want Allah's pleasure. If we start the fast and our objective is not to please Allah, then that fast is not a fast. That is not a fast, it's just poverty, it's hunger. During the fast, the first action within a person, the feeling, the objective that arises is what? I need to please Allah through this fast. Look, how? I have to please Allah. I don't want to displease Allah, I want to please Allah. So how does Allah get pleased? Allah gets pleased in this way. When we practice according to Allah Ta'ala's preference and His desire, the objective and the, the physical practice is given to us, then Allah will become pleased. Every moment I should have khawf, I should have the feeling that Allah, will you be displeased with me? Will I earn your displeasure? And this is taqwa. This is taqwa. This feeling, these feelings, this feeling and awareness that is Allah Ta'ala unhappy with me, will Allah become displeased with me? If I do this action, will Allah be unhappy with me? This feeling, this recognition, if we develop it within us, this is defined as taqwa and this is defined as radai lahi. Yes? And this is what we define as Allah's pleasure, Allah's happiness, Allah's acceptance that fasting generates. Look, if you keep the fast, step by step we understand. If you keep the fast, and the most sinful of persons, if he fast, he becomes a muttaqi. So the first quality that arises generates with him. As soon as he says, وَبِسَوْمِ غَدِّنَ وَيْتُ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَان Straight away the quality arises within him. So the feeling is arising that no, 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 no. I can't do this. I can't do this. Shall I spoil my fast? Shall I spoil my fast? Unconsciously that he is thinking after... Uh, regards to Allah Ta'ala's displeasure, he's speaking to his fast. He, what he's trying to say is that I don't want to displease my Rabb. But through the fast, he puts the fast in front of him and he, because he doesn't have that much understanding, but the consciousness has been developed within him. You know, he says, no, no, no. Oh, I'll spoil my fast. In reality, what's he saying inside? No, no, yaar, my friend, I can't displease my Rabb, my Lord. I can't do this. I can't do this action. Subhanallah. In other words, what he means by saying, no, no, I don't want to spoil my fast means I don't want to uh, make Allah unhappy. That's what he's saying. And so much caution comes into him that even the biggest of sinners, he tries that I don't want to do something impure, a dirty action, a wrong action that spoils my fast. And then he hears words from the ulama Akram, the respected scholars, backbiting spoils of fasting, lying spoils of fasting. He listens attentively on these points. The which things breaks the fast? And if I consume medicine, if I put the medicine in my eye, does it spoil my fast? If I do miswag, will the fast be broken, etc. So much caution comes into his life. He's just worried all the time. That, oh, if a bit of blood comes out of my mouth, will my break the fast? If I be mistaken, there was water in my mouth, as my fast broken? So much caution, tell me, so much caution. What's he careful about in reality? And, and that my fast, I don't want it to break. And in reality, it's not that. He's not speaking about the fast. Unconsciously, he's saying that, is Allah unhappy with me? Am I earning Allah's displeasure? He's using the front, the front and the name of the fast, but he's actually speaking about pleasing Allah. Because in his mind, the fast has overwhelmed his mind, but totally the fast generates and develops within this feeling, recognition of Allah. The water in my mouth will I break the fast? If I do this action with my break fast, a fast break, if I take some chutney or it goes through my mouth with my fast break, small, small, minor things, he's aware, conscious, that I don't want to spoil my fast. But this is the rada of Allah, the pleasure of Allah, the acceptance of Allah. That un- the consciousness comes into the man that if I do this action, will Allah be unhappy? Or if I do this action, will Allah be unhappy with me? Or if I leave salah, will Allah be unhappy with me? If I leave salah in congregation, will Allah be unhappy with me? Yar, if I take off the parda, hijab, will Allah be unhappy with me? If I start fighting at home, will Allah be unhappy with me? If I don't serve my husband, will Allah be unhappy with me? If my husband says that if I break the heart of my wife, will Allah be unhappy with me? Yani, the, the base, the, the basis of that person's life, he does every action for this reason. I don't want to displease Allah. And he knows, she knows,